Oh, what the fuck? Alex Jones's text messages? Oh, oh, the gift that keeps on giving, baby. First on CNN, Alex Jones's text have been turned over to the January 6th committee. Oliver Darcy reports. Fuck me, dude. That is so good. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, God, I'm going to come. Oh, fuck. All right. Let's start off with a dark Brandon meme that is now officially dead. But before that, hold on. Let me see this fucking Buddha clip you guys wanted me to watch. Man, these fucking crackers are fucking pasty as hell, man. Whoa, that sounded really bad out of context. I was talking about the crackers that I'm eating. <laughs> that sounded really bad. <laughs> oh my okay. Okay, guys, don't do that. Don't send me videos like this. I don't want Buddha to get fucking banned, especially on his birthday. You know what I'm saying? Uh-oh. Okay, what is this? Shopping at Ross. Oh, where be are like, the shirts at? Hmm, this one looks pretty good. Oh my god. <laughs> yes! Maybe this one looks pretty good. No, yo sabia. See, yo sabia. Oh, the material on this. No, there's my mom. No. Everything, dude. Everything at Ross. Everything is exactly like this. Is perfect. This is perfect. I know a lot of. I know a lot of the Flexicans ride for fucking Ross, but it's just the worst. Don't do it. You are not a Flexican if you shop at Ross, okay? You do not. You want to you wanna dress for less, and that's fine, okay? You want to dress for less, and that's fucking fine. But you have to literally think about what you, what is, what's being taken from you, okay? At what cost? Hit up a fucking TJ Maxx or a Marshalls instead. I'm telling you, dude. Hit up a fucking TJ Maxx or a Marshalls instead. Do not shop at Ross. The amount of... The, 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 the psychic damage that you will withstand as a consequence of fucking shopping at Ross is not worth it. Okay? At what cost? Yeah, what did it cost you? Everything. You don't have to do this to yourselves. Exactly. I'm grinding so I can TJ Maxx money. No, I mean, it's the same It's the same price point for the most part. And also, not only that, nah, it used to be popping. It fell off high key. No, my friend, it never was popping, okay? Back when I actually used to have time to go shopping for clothes, I fucking loved, especially as like a, a foreigner that came to America, I loved going to these fucking low-cost uh, bargain bin stores, right? And, and, you know, getting shit for my family back in Turkey. It was, it's like the number one thing that like every fucking foreigner does when they, if they're lucky enough to ever, you know, make it on U.S. soil. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. The gym wear is decent there. No, that's a trick. That's a trick. That trick is to get you through the door. You think it is, but then you look at it and you're like, there's no way this is real Adidas, okay? If you're parents right now, if there are parents in here and you have fucking kids, let me tell you something. Do not buy their shit at Ross Dress for Less, okay? It's like Adidas. It's a busted ass Adidas. They're going to get fucking clowned on at school. They're going to think like, oh man, I got like these new Adidas sh uh, shoes that I have, okay? It's sick. Like, all my friends are going to think it's uh, awesome. No, they're going to know it's fake. They're going to fucking rip them. Some fucking fuckboy supreme, uh, uh, you know, drop shipping. Uh, some, one, of the, one of his fucking classmates that you know is like basically a professional at figuring out what's fucking fake is going to point to him and go, that's fake, bro. And then that kid is over. It's over. For the rest of the fucking year, he's done, okay? He will be known as the guy who's wearing the Adibas. They will be bullied mercilessly. Do not do this to your children. Do not do this to your children, okay? Do not get them from Ross Dress for Less. Are you advocating for parents to blow all their money on kids' clothes instead of investing in their futures? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. That is exactly what I'm saying. Not every kid goes to school in Hollywood. Man, shut the fuck up. Why is it that people are always like, I'm actually literally writing this from the inside of a prison cell that I've been put in because I'm too poor. Like, shut the fuck up. This is like normal human shit, okay? You don't have to, it's not Hollywood. This is like almost universal. I grew up in fucking Turkey. I went to public school in Turkey and there was still, 
that same exact concept there, which it was like, why are you those shoes? Those are those are fake. Like that that exists as a universal value under capitalism. Okay. I just disagree. Ross is goaded. Dude, TJ Maxx or Marshalls. Okay. TJ Maxx or Marshalls. It happens a lot. I grew up in South LA. Me and my friends in New York City used to buy fake shit on purpose because it was cheap and no one cared by us. Yeah, I mean. Telling me you've never been to a flea market, Ajan? No, I think like. I think that uh, flea markets are fine. It's great. If, if flea markets are awesome. Ross and TJ Maxx are the same company, have the same suppliers. Yeah, except it doesn't fucking matter because clearly the better shit that's still at the same price point goes to TJ Maxx and the worst shit goes to Ross Just For Less. Ross Just For Less in Burlington Code Factory is where, is where clothes go to die, okay? It is literally the American version of sending like an African country the losing Super Bowl team's t-shirts, okay? That's it. Which, by the way, speaking of which, would be kind of fire, if uh, I could get my hands on that. But it is literally the American version of that. It is the domestic version of that. Just go to TJ Maxx instead. Go to TJ Maxx or Marshalls. It's the same price point. I'm giving you guys... That's not true. TJ Maxx and Home Goods and Marshalls are the same. Ross is a different company. <sighs> How do you feel about Shaq's shoes being at Walmart for lower income families? I'll just say this much. My fucking foreign parents didn't know the difference between Shaq and, and Jordan's and they bought me a bunch of Shaq shit. And then I got roasted at basketball camp for it. So I, I am not too fond of that. I know he did a nice thing and he wanted low income families to have shoes. Well, guess what, dude? Sometimes you still get, you still get roasted for it. Okay. You get roasted for it. You wear fucking... You wear the Starberries? Oh, my God. You wear the Shaq shit, you're going to get roasted for it, especially if you're not that good at balling, and I certainly was not, okay? Childhood trauma bias? Yeah, whatever. Man, that's a name I haven't heard in so long. You are 100% right. I just has my Hispanic mom who used to go to Ross. Never again. She's now ride or die. TJ Maxx or Marshalls. Anyway. My man said low income basketball camp. Bro. <laughs> if you're bad like me, it's not low income. You have to pay. But most of the other kids... They're getting paid to go there. That's basketball camp. I, I assume some of you have never done that. It's Twitch, so maybe. I don't know why every conversation that I have revolves around like uh, someone trying to be like, you're actually out of touch. Meanwhile, it's like the most normal combo to have. Like, it's not like I was fucking caked up when I was going to TJ Maxx. When I was living in a fucking, in the kitchen of a frat house, you know what I mean? Shut the fuck up. The only place I've ever seen Ross popping is in Germany. Clean, not overpriced. Any German chatters back up. Chat is clinically white and online. Yeah, it's just. You've right been, you've right been in the exact same position, had to pay to go to basketball shoot because I was below average at the game. Yeah. Also, however, though, basketball camp is unironically one of the most like socialist experiments that you could ever engage in. It is incredible for character development. You get placed into you get placed into a situation where like it, it is the closest you can ever achieve uh, to a meritocracy. It is all incomes, all the way from the poorest kids, all the way to the richest fucking kids. They're all together. Uh, that's how basketball camp works. It is actually very good for character development. To be fair, my bro, my family ain't even got running water and you were clowning on their raw strip. 
No, I'm clowning on you for getting them Ross instead of TJ Maxx. They don't have running water, and then you're also giving them Ross drip. Unacceptable. <laughs> I didn't do that to them. You did. Okay, all jokes aside, though. Um, <laughs> all jokes aside, though, yeah, basketball camp is is actually uh, like anyone that says like, "Oh, huh, basketball camp!" Wow, <laughs> rich guy has never been to basketball camp. <laughs> Bro, American brand fetishization is absolutely brain broken. Remember, chat, every time you buy unnecessary clothes, you're supporting the exploitation of a Bangladeshi 11-year-old girl. Yes, that's also true. Being a leftist is like, being a leftist is like uh, uh, constantly undermining your own personal experience with certain realities that like the overwhelming majority of people would most likely agree with that could be like a very easy joking bit in a in a you know in a comedic capacity because people want to look for a a classist interpretation of such realities because it's coming from like a now affluent wealthy uh white dude it's awesome it's like well let me let me figure out uh let me figure out why this is unethical because you think laughter is unethical okay that's it shut the fuck up The UK was footy camp getting sent there because you're a fat shit and always getting picked last because the best for character for development for sure. I mean, dude, I know. Listen, I was a fucking t-shirt in the pool guy, okay? Trust me. All the cool kids that are all the cool kids are ripping on you, okay? When you're the when you're the <laughs> when you're the fucking kid who wears a t-shirt to the pool so he doesn't even go into the pool because like at that point, it's like better that you don't go in the pool, okay? Honestly, uh, then, uh, yeah, you're you're gonna get ripped on. Aren't you still six four in Turkey? What? No, I I I got a second growth spurt in college, for sure. One time at football summer workouts, I was put on the skins team and walked over to the shirts team. Oh, dude, that's the worst. Yeah. That's the fucking worst. Shirts versus skins is unacceptable, dude. Some of us are not equipped for that, okay? You can't do that. Either put me on the shirts team or just don't even. I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm tapping out. I'm not going to be a part of that. Wasn't 6'4 when he was the t-shirt pool kid, dude. Yeah. People, it's always funny because like we joke about how like conservatives have no object permanence and then this chat will literally act like I was six foot four, 230 pounds shredded and, and rich my entire life. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, no, that's how I went to basketball camp when I was like fucking 13, 14. I was like six, four and jacked. This is how I came out the womb and they were like, damn. How are you how are you so paid at 13? <laughs> Look where your tweet notification cut off today. Hitting a million subs on YouTube, Senate Dems finally passed a bill and Republicans are big mad. Checking in with Lud, Lud about my anal. True. It's probably because we never see any of your out of shape pics and uh, just your great looking ones. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have any of them uh, available. I didn't used to take a lot of photos when I was when I was young for obvious reasons as well. So that's probably part of the reason. Anyway, chat is like how babies cry when their dad shaves his beard. Yeah, exactly. Well, this chat literally did cry when I shaved my beard, like the babies, if you remember. 
Back kit talk has to come with a trigger warning. You're digging up suppressed memories. Yeah, bitch. It's triggering me too. Okay. So whatever. Did you take student loans? Yes, I did. Um, okay. Did they not? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, when you were 14 years old at basketball camp, did they not know you were a famous Twitch streamer? <laughs> Um, you're an elite man. Do you think messages like this should be more received by men? Oh, I can't wait how terrible this is. This is true, but ask. Okay, that's going to be terrible. We shouldn't even look at that, honestly. What is this? What every Andrew Tate TikTok no, sounds like to me. No, but I don't think you're understanding. These girls are weird. Girls are smelly. And girls drool and boys rule. I mean, that's literally it. Yeah, this person nailed it. Straight up. That's that, I've been I've been making this joke for a while now. Um, I already saw the Buddha clip chatter. I already watched it. I was 365 pounds. Now I'm 205 pounds. Still going on until 185 pounds. Took a year off, but maintained back on now. Yeah. Baby Tucker. Got the cooties lately? You're not alone. It seems like the girls are giving it to everyone these days. Mrs. Johnson says cooties don't exist. The fact that she is herself a girl, we're told, is pure coincidence. I love that. That's funny. That's good. What's going on? Bro, Tucker Carlson. If Tucker Carlson looked like this, he would be the best Minecrafter, okay? Young, young Tucker Carlson is built like a Minecrafter, okay? Holy shit, the entire Minecraft Stan community would be the most reactionary, alt-right, insufferable psychos on the planet. Can you imagine? Holy shit. Imagine what you know about the Minecraft community as like uh, maybe rad femme, sometimes like tender queer, sometimes very upset, sometimes very, uh, you know, aggressive, over the top. Now imagine if they were all fucking Nazis, because if Tucker Carlson looked like this, they would literally be that way. So not much different, man. Y'all are fucking crazy. If you think the Minecraft community is not otherwise like overwhelmingly good, or at least like on the right side of fucking issues for the most part. Okay. Yeah, I saw this. I saw this TikTok uh, earlier. Um, no, Minecraft Twitter, uh, especially as they they're aging now, but. Minecraft Twitter, personally, okay, for the most part, is politics revolving around empathy, but they certainly do have a lot of, uh, you know, they certainly do have a lot of edges, and they are very, they're like rad femmes, I make fun of them, okay, you did it a song, congrats, never worked harder on anything my entire life, thanks everyone, hey, okay, Will, we did it. We made it to a thousand subs. Wait, where's the fucking, where's the, where's the, the, hold on. Where is the, uh, the, the counter? I didn't, to be fair, I didn't want to, um, I did not, or, or a thousand subs, a million subs. I did not want to look at the counter because I knew that it was going to, I knew that it was going to be uh, broken, but we did it. We officially did it. We made it. And I, I, cause I knew that if I pulled it up, Last time I last time I did this shit, when I pulled this shit up, it went down. And I know it's probably going to go down again now. But that's it. It's over. We've made it. Hella people will own sub when they see this, by the way. But, yeah, see, it's already happening. But it, there's, there's plenty of people who are combating it as well, so... Wait, what? Real-time subscribers? Why is it at 990? What the fuck's going on? Dude, stop! Every fucking time, dude! Every time! Why do you have to do this every time? Y'all are fucking joy stealers. This is literally why I didn't have the live counter up. This is why I did not have the live counter up. God damn it, dude. She made a sequel.
Okay, we're done with that. We're done. We're done. We're done with that. But yes, I made it. I made it to a million subs. Shouts out to Warger. Shouts out to Will Barker. Shouts out to Austin Ox. Shouts out to even the Daily Dose of Austin Abbey, who uh, we, we sometimes contract out for some edits as well. Um, we made it a long time. We, we, I, I really did not think that I would hit a million subs uh, ever on YouTube. Shouts out to the Hasanabi Eclipse Industrial Complex. You know what I mean? Congratulations. Uh, I hope all of you hit one million subs one day as well. Okay. And uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, riding me out to, to one million subs and a gold YouTube button. Okay. We had a couple of years back, old heads know, back in like 2019, I believe, before the 2020 election uh, boom, <laughs> I had a conversation, or in the beginning of 2020, actually, um, I had a, uh, I had a, a, a channel that was non-functional for the most part. I hadn't even opened up monetization uh, on YouTube. Some of the videos were monetizing. Most weren't. I don't even know how. And then I had a conversation with Ludwig. I think like back then he was a small, uh, he was a small fry as well. I remember when you posted that eight hour Epstein video on there. Yeah, that was not good. I think I got black, uh, blacklisted, uh, for that one. You had the convo with Elwig in September of 2020? Wait, really? Yeah, I had a convo with Ludwig, which uh, we will have another one today, uh, hopefully. But, um, yeah. Ludwig was so confused when he told him. Your name was mentioned a lot last couple of weeks of Andrew Tate. I'm on Team Hasanabi. I remember you watching Roasting Caitlin Bennett, and then I was hooked and started watching your stream. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people in here that uh, came in from individual videos that they either saw on the Hasanabi Clips Industrial Complex or videos that they saw on um, the the uh, videos that they saw on my you know on my on my channel. This one was a big one. Gun Girl gets publicly owned by communists. 3.1 million views strong. Reacted to the Bishop Bureau talking about the political compass. 2 million views strong. Hasan Abi reacts to men's rights versus feminism. I made Andrew Tate run away in a debate. That's a new one. Um, we've come a long way. I found you through the Fall Guys clip of the stream, uh, Sniper. Oh, really? Some of you, of course, uh, discovered me through other Twitch streamers that I collaborate with. That's normal. That's usually how it works. This is you and Lowick talking about YouTube. Now look, at the end of the day, if something happens... Oh my God, this was literally on September. I, I find a lot of fulfillment from what I do. I think that uh, it's easy to just like overlook it, say, oh, dude, you're just a fucking React Randall. Or, oh, dude, it's just like... You play video games or so. I had 186,000 subscribers on September 11th, 9 11, 2020. That's crazy. I found you through Eddie Burback defending you during the House and Abbey drama. I found you in the beginning of the pandemic from your debate streams. I was looking for election coverage I didn't have to put my cable info into. Yeah. I mean, look at that, dude. Look at the profile pic and shit. Like, it's crazy. You never really talk about the nine. You never really talk about nine eleven. What are your thoughts? Just curious. Yeah, we're just gonna keep that. Uh, we're gonna keep that a secret. But yeah, twenty twenty. I had one hundred eighty six thousand subscribers. I had a conversation with Ludwig. More than possible, right? I mean, I mean that I, I if you look at the way the platform looks, watch Tucker Carlson's dumbass every day. What? 
How many people watch Tucker Carlson? I know, but you're you're talking about Fox News, which captivates boomers and is millions of people watching exclusively yeah. for the news versus Twitch, a platform that's not really known for news. Sure. And has only yeah, recently started happened. getting into like just chatting and shit. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet, but I think just chatting will all I found you through a live stream fails thread shitting on you. That's so that's always wild when people are like yeah, I watched you uh, get shit on by like the most psychotic people, and then I decided this guy's got some good ideas. I mean, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of sanity and mental clarity to to figure out. I found you through this TikTok. This person hates me now. Is that the what anti Hasanabi. This person used to make pop and TikToks of me, and then, like, because of my takes on sex work, and they're, like, hugely anti-sex work, they hate me now. Is that what they teach you in college nowadays? I thought all they taught you was homosexual Marxism. Is that what they... I found you through incels hating on you and used to be a hate watcher. That's always so strange to me. But I guess, like, that's the goal, right? Found you through shit camp. Yeah. I don't remember from what I got to know you, Lamont. I don't know if I found old King Himbo. <sighs> I found you in my mom's room. <laughs> So, um, yeah, as I was saying back then, uh, I mean, holy shit in the past two years, we went from 183,000 subs to a million, which is pretty fucking crazy. And, um, I found you right after your nine 11 comments and hated you. But then I watched other lefty streamers and realized I was just in love with you. What the fuck? I found you through left Twitter. That's crazy. Uh, I found you through a Twitch link written on a bathroom stall. Okay, good one, dude. Um, started watching when you were on TYT. My friend described you as a left Alex Jones. Oh, God. I hope you got new friends. Heard about you from Misgift. Found you when my mom was watching the AOC stream. Found you through the Philly D thumbnail. Kept wondering who the hell this guy is. Literally found you from Cody Ko's old podcast that he did by himself so long ago. Oh, he took that episode down, too. For me, it was L Noel Miller's Hot Lab series. I found you because Daph kept mentioning you back in like 2019, 2020. I remember knowing about you in 2016, going through my reactionary phase and forgetting about you and then getting out and then having one of my still existing reactionary friends tweet about you. Jesus. I actually unfollowed for a while after you made a comment about Obama I didn't like, then came back when the pandemic started. That's so funny. Who the fuck watches something they don't like? Dude, when I turn on stream, I dislike it for some reason. It does bother me to keep watching. I just won't keep looking at it, especially regularly Hasanabi. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Um, There are a lot of people who uh, do love watching content that they fucking despise. I mean, we watch content that I despise all the time. We, we, we are hate watchers for reactionary content. The difference, of course, is that a lot of people come in here with negative associations and negative opinions of me, specifically because they will see or hear about me through like out of context clips and shit. And then ultimately they will realize that that is not the case. Uh, or they have, uh, they will realize that I was being misrepresented. Some people don't stick around for that much and they just keep hating. Some people do stick around after that and go, Oh wait, I actually like this guy. Or, or, there are some people who definitely 
Um, there are some people who definitely sit here and probably have started that way and then have changed their minds as some mentioning, some were mentioning. I was hooked when you said, I hope they do a Sharia next on a Boo Boo Bennett video. I used to watch snippets of John Oliver or something like that. Yeah. I wonder how many immediately banned chatters actually like you now. I mean, that's why when we do ban appeals, I love seeing that shit. Um, there are chatters who were like in 2019 saying like really reactionary fucked up shit, but then, it, you know, and then they get banned and they're like, dude, I've been watching you for like three years. Can you please, uh, you know, unban me? I am not the same person I was when I got banned. And that's awesome. Um, but yeah. I think the first time a lot of people heard about you was the TYT breakdown clips on Facebook, but they just never knew who you were until they eventually found your stream and learned who you really are, just like I did. Yeah. Your dead name rant, I was I did hooked. say her dead name, though, in your example of what people said. Yes! I said Bruce Jenner when talking about what dead naming is to describe to people what dead naming is. Are you fucking brain dead? We also said Ellen Page when talking about Elliot Page and what dead name it would be. How do you explain something to people without using examples? That's how people learn. Fuck. Fucking brain dead idiots. You did say her dead name though in your example of what people. You don't get heated like that anymore? Call that growth? I mean, sometimes I still pop off like that. I started watching the streams after a JHB team interview. That's so crazy. It's always like weird. You pulled my extremely racist friend out of the alt-right rabbit hole purely through your drip. Love that. Found you when a clip of you went viral of you saying, what's this? When, a, when it was snow on top of their car in LA a long time ago. Yeah. Dude, how the fuck did we go from 1,333 to 1 million 50? We went down and then we went back up to 1 million. I guess. I found you on some vid where you hired e-girls to play COD with. It was funny and you weren't creepy. I respect dudes not being creeps. Low bar for masculinity. I know. Been a fan since. Yeah, no, that was great. Um, that was a that was a fun ass video. I was dead set on becoming a nun and started watching your Facebook vids, and now I'm uh, now I'm living a fulfilling life as a trans man. Whoa, that's a wild, wild change of events for you. Um. I was indoctrinated Trump hating MSNBC Live. I saw some of your fan videos on YouTube. I was intrigued. I was very angry. You honestly changed my life. Hell yeah, gaming the spectrum. My brother and I watched your TYT Facebook videos religiously in high school. Yeah. Um, I found you through clip channels. I was looking up some political content. The algo started showing me you reacting to the same news. React lording is a great way for a YouTube algo too. Yeah. Um, I found you from the Bolka stream of James Marco St. Marco. I found you in the 2020 election year after another streamer complained he wasn't the biggest political streamer covering it. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, big waves. This community has grown a lot over the years. And, um, you know, YouTube has never really been my main, uh, YouTube was never really that big for me. Uh, it was never something that I like cared about or considered at all. Um, I was just like hyper focusing on, uh, you know, I was hyper focusing on Twitch stuff and it's wonderful that it, uh, that even the YouTube channel, my actual YouTube channel, not the, not the fan channels. And there are plenty of them out there and they're also growing all the time, but my actual YouTube channel hitting a million subs is pretty good.
You know what I mean? Punch the gun girl YouTube video. I found your stream after Twitch women were thirsty for you. YouTube vid. <laughs> nice. But the reason why I love this kind of thing, uh, where people tell me where they first found me is because I want all the people in here that constantly are second guessing some of the things that I choose to do as far as content. Um, to understand that like it's way broader than that by the way th uh, thank you tyler sparks for the 10 gifted subs and uh thank you to speed razor for the 20 gifted subs earlier john press for the five gifted subs merle stamps for the five gifted subs um like you guys a lot of you don't understand that like uh a lot of you some people don't understand when i when i had like a thousand viewers in here there was always uh there was always a lot of pushback whenever I did something that was like outside of the realm of, of commentary and politics. There was always also a lot of pushback to like not immediately trying to fucking uh, shove debates down the throats of every fucking like Twitch streamer or whatever. And, and constantly maintaining an antagonistic relationship with every single other person on this platform. And the reason why I don't like doing that is twofold. One, because that's not who I am. I think that like there is a more positive way of, of changing people's minds and attitudes about politics rather than trying to fucking make them uh, feel terrible and humiliate them. Uh, Dead Logan 69, thank you for the 10, give the subs. The Idol Room, thank you for the 5, give the subs. And, and also on top of that, like uh, collaboration is a much better way of like easing people into to, uh, seeing your point of view without immediately uh, attacking you. So that's it. There is a there's a method to this madness. So I, I do appreciate all of you for sticking around uh, for as long as you have. And I love that this community keeps growing. It's awesome. So, yeah. I found you and you managed to snag me before my internalized transphobia and depression dragged me down to an all right rabbit hole. Thanks so much, brother. Hell yeah. I stayed because you taught me more about Japanese war crimes than my teacher did in Japanese high school. Yeah, of course. I've always felt you had the best theory of change for Twitch and it's born out of how successful this channel is. Yes. So yeah, never forget that like, um, Haas on Twitch. Thank you for the 10 tier one gifted subs. Um, don't forget that your, like this community being as large as it is. And I did talk about this with Ludwig a little bit at the end, at the tail end of the podcast. When Lud was talking about how like how much I care about uh, view count or whatever, how much I care about like growth as a as a metric for success, and how that's like not good for my mental sanity and 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 health, which he's right. But I told him about my theory of change then as well uh, on that YouTube uh, on that uh, podcast as well. It'll be out in a little bit, so you can hear it once again. But um, I I think that um. Like without having as robust, as large as a community, uh, what I'm doing would not work necessarily. It, it's just, it just would not. I, I, I recognize charitability is the most important component to being able to, to get people to listen to you and to get people to understand what you're saying. And unfortunately, a lot of people are just not charitable. A lot of people make a killing off of not being charitable. A lot of people choose to interpret things that you're saying in the most awful way possible and most normal people recognize that that's like really fucked up and stupid right so that's definitely something that i try to that's definitely something that i try to to instill upon uh younger generations of leftists because it is something that it is something that absolutely makes leftists and and left adjacent communities look fucking unapproachable and so annoying people think that like people think that like not being charitable and and uh deriving messages that you did not intend to send out of things that you are saying by looking at it in the least charitable way possible is like doing praxis and that's really fucking stupid you know it's really stupid. It's really dumb. Most normal people do not operate that way. 
those very same people that do that would be destroyed if others uh, 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 others interpreted consistently every single thing that they're saying in the least charitable lens as well. And um, and I think that that is something that we miss out on a lot. This community makes you realize you're not crazy or alone for having progressive takes and thinking Dems and conservatives are bad. Yeah. So yeah, um, done that to me. What I've I've taken something you've said that's not charitable. I mean, if it that does happen, for the record, I certainly do that myself sometimes when I'm like on a roll and I'm going through the chat and chat is at a hundred miles an hour and someone says something that is like insanely reactionary or comes across as insanely reactionary. I don't usually have the capacity to filter that through the lens of like, is this guy being sarcastic or not? You know what I mean? Anyway, let's take a look at, uh, I want to crash my car into a telephone pole standing on the gas with no seatbelt on. I can't hold it. It makes me absolutely. Mad. I want to crash. There's an update to it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under I Damn, he got he got bitter. Where is the Bugatti? I love this new I love this new thing of like finding random bald people uh, all over the internet and thinking that they're Andrew Tate. That's such a funny meme, dude. <laughs> Like, that's not Andrew Tate, man. That's just like a fucking bald dude with a shaped up beard, you know? Um, but yeah, the thing is, the, the thing is like for me specifically, I also do have a lot of fucking, I do also have a lot of, of sarcastic takes that you know, I use all the time uh, that, that uh, I use, uh, I use sarcasm regularly and people don't understand it. I use like exaggerated takes regularly and people don't understand it. Um, especially from, uh, the outside, especially, uh, people coming in, especially when there's a lot of people who want to look at it in the most like uncharitable way possible, but Hey, it happens, you know, and uh, just remember that there are more of us. And I mean, like uh, people who are on the left or have progressive values that they might not even know how to fucking uh, mention. That they might not be able to personally communicate. Uh, they have a lot of leftist values internally uh, based around empathy for everyone, for their fellow man. Um that that also like to laugh, okay? That also like to uh, to find humor and shit, okay? That's it. So remember that there are more people like us that are normal that personally believe in like, um, that, that, you know, personally believe in politics of empathy that, uh, also like to laugh at things. And, and it is normal to not always agree 100% with every single thing that, uh, someone is, uh, advocating for. And that's also okay. That's also fine. All right. All right. You claim that you have left his takes. I oh, know. Okay, I'm not even going to read that. Okay. You once permitted me for saying you watch hours of TMZ. Yeah, you do. That's why Radlib started the whole dirtbag left narrative. Yeah. Now, leftism is when you purity test, and the more purity testing you do, the more leftist it is. Yeah.
Just gonna say one million subs on YouTube. And I have a, I have another announcement that's coming out. Um, I have another announcement that's coming out about YouTube in a little bit. Okay. What? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'll just say it now. I'll just say it now. At the top of the hour, there's a six second ad break on Twitch. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month, okay? Use it on your favorite streamer. Hopefully that's me, okay? And uh, also, uh, you can get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Tyler Spark, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Okay. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Uh, here's the one minute ad break now. Coming now. Uh, least annoying vegan tank. Thank you for the 10 gifted. Jesus Caballero 13. Thank you for the five gifted. Here's the one minute ad break now. I'm doing other shit and I barely focused on stream. And I literally focused on stream for that. I hate you. Yeah, well, there you go. I regret finding you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, low, low key Lucy. Thank you for the five gifted subs as well. Okay. Here, I'll tweet out that I fucking subs on. Button one. I'll steal the Austin Ox meme. It's a U.S. Army ad, Lamont. Of course it is. There it is. Here it is. Here, juice it. We did it. I really never thought that I would get to a million subs on YouTube, but I also never thought that I'd become one of the largest Twitch streamers on the platform too. So wild to, wild to be able to do all of that. And obviously I would not be able to do any of that if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you. No, my commentary might not always 100% uh, uh, align with what you believe in, but I will keep trying to entertain you and change your minds regardless. But yeah. Hopefully to many more millions. You should give the golden plaque to Jay Schlatt. No, probably not. He already has enough. What is the bottle that you're drinking? It's a health potion. Rovich1122, thank you for the five gifted subs. Um, okay. I am thinking, by the way, I'm thinking of uh, potentially... Wait, hold on. I just got to... 
give a quick shout out to this man. Midlife crisis confirmed. Uh, at least I'm not doing shit like this. That's one. Um, I'm also thinking about uh, potentially doing on eight on eight twenty one in honor of the legendary day where I said what I said about nine eleven, and then the vindication uh, two years later during the anniversary when like everyone started realizing oh shit like all the jokes he was making were real um because all the documentaries basically said exactly what i was saying about 9-11 and afghanistan um anyway uh in honor of that i might do a full hank pecker stream i might do a full hank pecker stream on 821 just like full-blown right-wing stream so that's what i'm thinking about doing potentially you know just to fucking seal the deal that uh, if you do right wing commentary, especially if you don't say like overtly racist shit on purpose, you will probably not get canceled. Yo, these lyrics, dim pool is nuts. She was 12, I was 40. She said, get the fuck off me. Dad punched my ribs, motherfucking libs. Oh my God. As your southern, as a southerner, your Hank is too realistic. Hell yeah, brother. That's right. That's right. <coughs> okay. Pecker Protector, Soheeb, thank you for the five gifted subs as well. I'm blessing you with more lovely cut content. We'll do siblings or dating in a little bit, okay?